So I, uh, I never meant to be cryptic or, or vague about this uh, at all. I just really wasn't sure if <laughs> anybody was super interested in these. And, you know, actually, I, did, I, got, I got accused of being cryptic about it. That's why I use that word cryptic. But uh, like I said, it was, uh, I don't really talk about gear a whole lot on this channel. Maybe once a quarter or maybe a couple times a year, I'll, I'll talk about a, a new camera bag that was released. But for the most part, I don't do a ton of, of gear talk. So I, uh, like I said, just wasn't 100% sure if this was something that would, uh, would interest uh, the masses. But it, it seems like... Uh, it seems like there's quite a few people out there that are interested in this. So wanted to make this video all about it. So I've mentioned this in a, in a couple videos over the past few months, but I, I've never really done a, any kind of a, a deep dive on exactly what these are. And uh, they're, they're the, the black mist filters. And it's kind of, I wouldn't say it's uncommon, but uh, you, you, these are usually used for maybe portrait photography or street photography. They're seldom used for landscape photography, and I started kind of testing them out uh, uh, a few months ago, and I've been super, super excited with the results. Actually, the most, uh, or my favorite uh, images I've captured this entire summer all had this uh, kind of a diffused uh, softening filter applied to it. And I've got one on the end of my camera right now. What is this? This is the, the 1 8 strength. And uh, let me record a video through my camera here so you can see exactly what it is. And let me just adjust these settings really quickly. Uh, I think something about right here looks good. But if I turn this or take this off, let me unscrew this real quick, you can see. Jeez, there we go. That's what it looks like without the filter. I'm not going to screw it back on. I'm just going to place it in front of it. And that it, there it is with the filter. So without and with, without, and with. And I've been taking a bunch of different, uh, I guess, versions of this while I've been out here. The, I got out here super early trying to, to capture the sun rising through these trees because these work, these filters work the best when there's nice highlights uh, kind of coming through, you know, trees or, or any kind of the diffused light, but a smaller light source. I find that these work the best. And the set that I'm using is the, the set from uh, Nisi. I've got three of them, the, uh, the 82 millimeter, but I have the, the quarter strength, the half strength, and the one eighth strength. Uh, all in the 82 millimeter thread size and then I just use step up rings to uh, be able to attach them to all of my lenses but the purpose of these is uh, you know like for for portrait photography they're super popular because it uh, kind of softens skin out a little bit it removes uh, or not removes but it re reduces well reduces blemishes but obviously that's not a uh, very important use case for for landscape photography in, in my personal opinion and it also lowers contrast of scenes just a little bit which is kind of really what got me interested about it because i always reduce contrast and kind of lift the blacks in in my post processing uh, my my editing process and they also these black mist filters also do something that's called makes makes highlights bloom and blooming and glowing are kind of different things a little bit but uh, you know the Orton effect is super popular with uh, landscape photography as well and that's something that I like to apply to the highlight regions of many of my photographs so I started watching a lot of these street photography channels on YouTube and a lot of them use this because it makes lights glow or makes lights bloom a little bit the difference between blooming and glowing is uh, is very very subtle but uh, nevertheless, it just kind of creates this ethereal atmosphere around lights. But um, I, I've really enjoyed the look because it does have a, a much uh, kind of a softer, a very diffused look to, um, to images. And these are things that I was already kind of doing in post-processing, but I've had a hard time actually trying to replicate this exact look through post-processing. I've only been able to, to kind of do this with the filter. So nevertheless, I wanted to come out here today and just kind of create a video that shows a lot of the before and afters because personally i've never done it i just went out and started using these filters and i and i really do like the way that it looks but wanted to kind of get some comparison um, content so i'm out here just kind of shooting just these kind of random scenes that are really perfect for the scenario i'm going to go back to the house here and put them on the computer and kind of take a deep dive and to do a lot of uh, before and after with different strengths to uh so you can really see the difference and also i wanted to really see how how big of a difference it was between the different strengths because personally I believe that the one eighth and the one quarter strength are by far my favorite. So I have the one quarter strength here and let me record through my camera, record. So that is the scene without the filter 
and then this is with the filter. I'm not screwing on, screwing it on or anything like that, but that's with. I'm sorry. <laughs> I had one job, Mark. This is with out, and this is with without, and with the filter. And again, that's the, the quarter strength. And I think the eight strength and the quarter strength is probably my favorite. One half strength in many scenarios is just too much. The, the blooming and the, the blooming effect almost just kind of overtakes the entire scene or o overpowers the entire scene to where all that you notice is just the blooming highlights and it kind of detracts from the overall photograph. But in some scenarios it works good. But in my experience, one eighth and one quarter is the way to go. So as the sun has just been rising through this canopy of trees, I've just been taking as fast as I can, switching out uh, step up rings and adding the different uh, three different uh, filter strengths to the end of my camera. Just that way I can go back to the house and do some really good comparison of the three different strengths to determine one, the overall effect, what the look looks like, what the look appears like for uh, outdoor and landscape photography. And, you know, just uh, which strength is the best, you know, every situation is going to be a little bit different, but I wanted to do a, a real deep dive kind of comparison of the two. I have the, uh, the half strength, the, the strongest strength now uh, with my step up ring applied to it. Let me record through my camera again so you can see this. So that right there is without the filter, and this is with the filter, without the filter, and with the filter. So you can really see that how strong the, the half stop filter is. Like I said, in some scenarios it's okay, but other scenarios it's just kind of a little bit of an overkill. So I'm gonna stay out here a little bit longer, look for a couple of different uh, scenarios or kind of compositions, if you will, where this might look interesting. I'm definitely not creating any type of award-winning photography at all. That really wasn't even the objective this morning. It really was just to get out here in this beautiful weather and um, look for light coming through a canopy of trees because I feel like that is the scenario where these uh, black mist filters, uh, the effect is probably the most obvious to see and I figured this would be the best scenario to kind of test this out in. So I'm gonna stay out here a little bit longer, get a few more images and then take all of this back to my house, put it on a computer and do a lot of kind of before and after comparisons so you can see with the filter, without the filter and the different strengths as well. That was, that was pretty interesting. I really haven't had an opportunity to, to kind of dive into the, the photos just yet. I was just kind of organizing them to make it a little bit more uh, succinct as I go through these. But there is definitely a difference. And something that I've wanted to do for a while now is to try these filters out on video. What thread size is that? 72. Uh, 72. But uh, I'm going to put the... What strength is this? This is the one quarter strength on now. And in theory, my skin should look better, which is uh, always a good thing. I have never been blessed with nice clear skin, but it should also make the, uh, just the overall contrast of the scene a little bit more subdued, maybe make the, the, the footage not quite so bitey or so harsh, I should say, and also make these highlights a little bit softer, a little bit more diffused and have them kind of blend into different tones of the scene. So hopefully that comes through. I was gonna try it out with the, the half stop, but pretty certain that the half stop filter would have created a too, too obvious of a look, a little bit of an overkill. So one quarter strength should look okay, but um, you'll, you'll know before me. So nevertheless, here are the, the photos. This is with no filter at all. This is straight out of camera. And then this see, this image here is the, I think this is the eighth strength or the quarter strength. And then that is gonna be the half strength. So once again, this is no filter. This is the quarter strength. And then this is the half strength. And if you pay attention to not only the, the brighter, I, I know it's easy to get distracted just by looking at the, the blooming aspect of the highlights, but also pay attention to the overall contrast in the scene and also how the highlights kind of start to blend into certain areas, specifically the darker mid-tones and the shadow areas of the scene. So once again, this is no filter at all. This is the quarter strength filter and then this is the half strength filter. And if you pay attention to where the light kind of blends, bleeds into the shadow areas, I think that that is probably one of the, the most interesting aspects of it. So once again, no filter, quarter strength, half strength. Here's another example here. This is no filter at all. This is the eighth strength. So very, very subtle. If I toggle this back and forth, you can see that. So that's the eighth strength, quarter strength, and half strength there. And I'll go through it again. No filter, eighth strength, quarter strength and the full strength here. And let me put all these together on this 
screen at one time so you can see these. So this is kind of the, the transition here. No filter, eight strength, quarter strength, and half strength. So I really personally love the way that it looks. And it's not just the, the blooming highlight aspect of it. It's to me, what's most important is the, the highlights, the diffuse highlights and atmospheric highlights that it creates. The contrast, I love the way it just kind of subtly reduces the contrast just a little bit and how it blends, bleeds those highlights into the darker midtones and the shadow areas of a scene. And I got another really good example here as well. So this is no filter at all. This is the eighth strength, quarter strength, and half strength. Once again, no filter at all, eighth strength, quarter strength, and half strength. And let me put all these on the screen at once as well. And the reason that I really like this, this uh, example here is this, it's not so glaringly obvious because naturally if, if you have a diffused filter on the end of your camera and you point it directly at the sun, you're really, really going to see that. And this is, of course, is pointed directly at the sun, but it was a little bit behind the cloud at that time. So it creates a little bit more diffused look. But I think that this is a, a great representation. And once again, this one up here in the upper left hand corner is no filter at all. This one right here is the eighth strength. This one right here is the quarter strength. And then this one right here is the half strength. And then a final example here. Now this next example, this is a good representation of contrast. So there's not a lot of blooming highlights in this example here, but it's a good representation of the overall contrast uh, reduction that this filter creates. So this is no filter at all. This is the eighth strength quarter strength, which honestly, I really can't see a big difference between the eight strength and a quarter strength in this scenario, but this is the half strength as well. Half strength, not as well, but in conjunction along with, you know what I'm trying to say here. That is the, the, the half strength. So once again, no filter, eight strength, quarter strength, and half strength. So if you just really pay attention to the, the tree trunks, you can really see a difference of that contrast reduction that it creates for the overall scene. And it is also kind of blooming out or making those app that highlights a little bit more atmospheric as well. But I think that out of all of these, this is probably my, my favorite example right here. Let me put all these up on the screen. And I think that this really, really tells the tale of the difference between no filter and then the eight strength to quarter strength and the half strength. So, I mentioned this uh, quite a few times in previous videos where I just kind of talked about this in just little snippets, but I very rarely, if ever, have seen these used in outdoor and landscape photography. It's primar primarily in portrait photography, and I found out about them through street photography uh, videos on YouTube, and that's kind of when I started to, to research these a little bit, and I just thought to myself, you know what? In landscape photography, we are, at least I personally and a lot of other people I know, often use the Orton effect. We like to soften our photographs a little bit. So if there was a filter out there that could kind of do both of these together and create something a little bit more unique in the way that they make these highlights look because the Orton effect can't make highlights bloom like this does. It's, a, it's very difficult to replicate this. And I really like the way that this looks. So I've kind of wanted to start testing these out. Like I said, I've been using them all summer long, even a, a month or so, I think I got them in the spring of this year. And I've been using it quite a bit and I couldn't be more happy with these filters. And, and this is not a sponsored video at all for, for Nisi. Nisi doesn't even know that I'm making this video. It's just a filter that I, I really enjoy and I just wanted to uh, share it with you all today. And I will put a link in the description to the, uh, the Black Mist filters that I use from Nisi. It is an affiliate link. So if you do purchase it through the link, I'll get a, a small amount of commission, which definitely helps, uh, helps things out, helps uh, support the channel and myself and it is greatly appreciated. But uh, once again, super, super cool. It's, uh, it's uh, something a little bit unique. So if you want to try something different, kind of set yourself apart from, from everybody else, this is a great thing to, uh, to test out for outdoor and landscape photography. And it's something that I have really enjoyed. If, uh, if you have any questions about the black mist filters, uh, definitely leave those questions in the, the comment section below and I'll do my best to get back in touch with you as soon as possible. And once again, I do apologize if anybody thought I was being kind of cryptic or guarded about these filters. I really wasn't. I was just kind of mentioning them in, in one-off scenarios because I really wasn't certain if anybody... Uh, actually, I wasn't really certain if I was completely sold on them just yet. And I don't really like to talk about things on the channel that uh, I don't really believe in because I don't want to, uh, you know, talk about some, I don't, I don't want somebody to purchase something because I talked about it if it's not something that I really believe in. 
So I just kind of just talked about it here and there, but um, it was never my intention to be uh, cryptic or guarded about these filters at all. So I wanted to make this video today and I hope you did enjoy it. As always, if you did enjoy it, if you could give it a thumbs up, subscribe to the channel. If you're not subscribed already, share the video with your friends or your local photo club if you enjoyed it that much. And as always, I really do appreciate you watching this week's video and I will see you all next Wednesday. Bye.